Hi makers, welcome back to my channel. It's Sierra with Sierra's Crafty Creations and today we're going to be crocheting this summer cardigan. This is my Aria Cardi pattern. You can find the free pattern on my blog. If you'd like to follow along, the link is in the description. And I'm going to be using Lion Brand ZZ Twist yarn. This is the yarn that I call for in the pattern just because I love the texture and how light this yarn is and it's great for a summer garment. However, you can use any other size four worsted of weight yarn that you would prefer. You can use cotton. This is 100% acrylic, but it does give off um, some, some cotton vibes to it, I'll say. Um, I do, I really enjoy working with this yarn. They came out with it last summer and I have quickly beca um, became in love with it. So I did use this in the the pattern my blog but I have also made up this same exact pattern in many different other yarns and it always turns out great so you can use whatever size four that you would like so that's for the yarn and I will go ahead and post a picture of the yardage that you're going to need for the following sizes it's going to go extra small through 3xl So that's the yardage that you'll need for the yarn. And for your hook, you're gonna need a size five millimeter H hook. This is a special hook because I got to hand make this myself at one of the maker's retreats. So I love this hook, it holds a special place in my heart, but this is a five millimeter H hook. You're also gonna need some scissors, just one stitch marker, and a yarn needle for the end. I promise you this cardigan is going to be very low amount of sewing. Just the shoulder seams need to be whip stitched together. So let's go ahead and jump into the pattern. And for those of you that need to know measurements and are not following along with the free pattern, I will go ahead and post a picture of the chest measurements for each size here. Just keep in mind with these measurements that this is an open cardigan. Um, it doesn't need to fully close, it's not a sweater. So you just keep that in mind when looking at the measurements for what size to make for yourself. And next we are going to point out all of the stitches that we're going to be using in this pattern. You're gonna need to know how to chain, how to double crochet, how to treble crochet, and how to do a double crochet decrease. I will slow it down for those of you who are new to some of these stitches to show you exactly how they're done, but those are the ones that we're going to be using in this pattern. I'll now insert a picture of how the cardigan will be constructed. We'll be working on the body starting from the bottom up and then we'll move into our front panels and then our back panel. And you can see in the diagram each part of it, so our front panels are gonna come to, not a complete point, but come to a triangular shape, and those are gonna be met at the top, and we will sew those berry tops as our shoulder seams, but we'll get to that later. I just wanted to show you how it will be constructed and what we'll be working on first, which will be the body, so it'll be the widest part of the cardigan. So let's go ahead and jump into the body portion of the pattern. For now, you're just gonna need your yarn and your hook to get started, and we're going to get going on the body portion of the cardigan. So to start off, we're going to need to make a slip knot. And we're going to be chaining. So I'll, I'm just gonna be making a very small sample size of this just to show you the stitches, the repeats, and how to create it from start to finish, but it will be a lot smaller because it's a sample size. So to follow along with the sizing that you need to create your size, go ahead. I will go ahead and insert a graphic here for you to show you how many you need to chain. So for the extra small, small size, you're going to chain 122. For the medium slash large size, you're gonna chain 158. And for the extra large 2XL size, you're going to chain 190. And for the 3X, 4X size, you're gonna chain 210. And just keep in mind, this is going to be 
the widest part of your cardigan. So part of it's going to be the back portion and then these parts over here are going to eventually fold over to the front. So that is why there are so many chains. So go ahead and chain how many ever you need for the size that you're making. And I so you're going to take your yarn right into chain just a little refresher you're going to hook your yarn pull it through that loop take the yarn and pull it through that loop that's your second chain and keep doing this until you hit the correct number for the size that you're creating and i will meet you back when you're done well, once you got your chain to the right number for your size we are going to start with our foundation row so to do that, we're going to be using the double crochet stitch and that you're going to yarn over and you're going to skip the first three stitches. So this is the first one, second one, third one, and then we're going to insert our hook into that fourth stitch. Then we're going to yarn over and pull that through. And you should have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, pull through the first two loops, and then yarn over, pull through the last two. And that's a double crochet. All right, and us skipping those first three made our first double crochet, and that was our second. So again, you're going to yarn over, and you're going to go in the stitch right beside that, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through yarn over pull through the first two and yarn over pull through the last two that's the double crochet and you're going to do that in every single stitch in the chain that you made so you're going to place a double crochet in each chain here and i will go ahead and meet you at the end we've made it to the end you guys so we're, i just wanted to point out there's a little knot here and to not miss your last chain. So you want to make sure that you put your double crochet in that last chain there and not miss it. And another tip that I would like to give is to count your stitches to make sure that you have the correct amount. So for the extra small small size, you should have 120 of these double crochets. So you can count their little bars. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how you'll count them. And I just want to point out at the very end slash beginning, this right here, where we skipped those stitches, this is going to count as a stitch. So just keep that in mind as well. So for the extra small, small size, you should have 120 double crochets. For the medium large size, you should have 156. For the extra large 2X size, you should have 188. And for the 3X slash 4X, you should have 208. So just go ahead and I know it might take a minute, but it'll totally be worth it. You always want to make sure that you have the correct number of stitches. So go ahead and count that out and make sure that you have those right stitches. If you don't, you can go back and see where you missed one and then you'll just have to pull out your work, unfortunately, and go back to where you missed one and correct your mistake. So go ahead and count that out and we will be back soon. Moving on to the next row, we are going to chain five. So we're gonna yarn over, pull through this loop. That's one, two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to take our work and turn it. So we're going to be working this way. We're going to the chain the five, and then we're going to be creating treble crochets in this row. And the chain five is going to count as your first treble crochet in your first chain one space. Let me pull it up closer here. So we're going to skip this stitch. The the first stitch open, we're going to skip this one and we're going to work into this one. You are going to yarn over two times and then we're going to insert a hook. So we're going to skip this stitch 
and insert into the next one. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two more loops. And then yarn over, pull through the last two. And that's a treble crochet. So you can see how tall they are. And now we're going to chain. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through here to create a chain. We're gonna skip this one and work in this stitch. And that's gonna be the same throughout this entire row. So we're going to, again, yarn over twice around our hook, skip this stitch, work in the very next one, insert your hook, yarn over and pull through, and you'll have those four loops again on your hook. You're gonna yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the next two, and yarn over and pull through the last two. And there's your next treble crochet. So like I said, we're gonna keep doing that all the way until the end. So we're gonna chain one, yarn over twice, skip this stitch, work in the next one. So go ahead and keep doing that and I will meet you at the end of the second row. We're now at the end of row two. I wanted to come on in just give you a little reminder you have your chain one and you're ready to make your last treble crochet you're gonna skip this one and you're gonna end at the top right here I know it's not technically a stitch but that is part of the chains that we skipped on the other row so we're gonna yarn over twice insert at the top and create your treble crochet there and that is going to end row two. So again, here are the numbers for you. Um, if you want to count these bars, your treble crochets, for the small, ex extra small, small size, you should have 60. For the medium, large size, you should have 78. For the extra large 2x, you should have 94. And for the 3x, 4x, you should have 104. Again, all of this is in the free pattern on my blog. It's linked down below if you want to follow along, but I will keep putting up the numbers here for you so you can follow along in the video as well. So now we have our first and our second row done. So let's go ahead and get into row three. We're going to chain three. One, two, three, and you're gonna turn your work. And in this row, we're going to be doing double crochets just like we did in the first row. But it's gonna be a little different because we have to work in different spaces. So our chain three that we just did counts as our first double crochet. So we're going to yarn over and we're gonna work in the chain one space right here. So you're gonna insert your hook underneath the chain one space bar and you're gonna yarn over and pull up and you'll have your three loops because we're doing double crochets. So you're gonna yarn over, pull through the first two, and yarn over, pull through the last two. And then we're going to do a double crochet in this stitch and our treble crochet from the last row. So that opening is right here. That one's a little easier to find. So you're gonna create a double crochet there. And then again, we're gonna be creating a double crochet underneath that chain one stitch that we did. So you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook into this space and create your double crochet. And you're gonna keep doing this all the way until the end. At the end of row three, I just wanna do my end of row check-in with you guys. So this is what it looks like. You wanna be sure to put a double crochet in this chain one space. So you still have two stitches to do, so one in the chain one space. And then we're gonna go to this last stitch and we're gonna count four chains. One, two, three, four. And that's where you're gonna wanna put your very last stitch in that fourth chain. All right, and that's how it should look for you. Now let's head on to row four. Row four and five are gonna be exactly the same. 
they're going to be rows of double crochet. So we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And remember this counts as your first double crochet. We're going to turn our work. And this should be a little easier for you guys. So that counts as our first one. So this stitch, we don't put anything in that one because this chain three counts as our first stitch, as our first double crochet. So we're going to, oops, we're going to yarn over one time and we're going to go in the very next stitch right here and place our double crochet. And you're just going to put a double crochet in every stitch in the row. And again, you're going to do this for this fourth row and for your next row. So four and five are just going to be this, placing double crochets in each stitch. End of row four, check in for you. Your last two stitches. Again, we always want to make sure that we're putting a stitch in the very last one here. This was our beginning chain three on the last row and you're going to count three chains, one, two, three, and that's where you're going to put your last double crochet. And again, chain three and turn your work and it's going to be the same for row five, double crochet in each stitch. And I apologize for those who are counting your stitches your double crochet count for these rows are going to be the same as your row count for the first row. So your double crochets and your treble crochet rows, the, the stitch count should stay the same for you. So again, row five, double crochet in each stitch. we're at the end of row five and we're going to start on row six and this is going to be the where we're going to create that x formation look in the cardigan so we're going to chain five one two three four and five and we're going to turn our work and we're going to be doing treble crochets in this round we're just going to be placing them in different spaces to create that x look so again, the chain five counts as our first treble crochet and our first chain one. So we're going to yarn over twice. And for this row, we're going to skip three stitches. Again, this stitch doesn't count because that is for our treble crochet. So we're going to skip one, two, three, and then we're going to insert our hook into the fourth stitch over. And you're going to create a treble crochet as normal. So yarn over, pull through the stitch yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through the last two. All right, and then we're going to chain one, and we're gonna yarn over twice to create our next treble crochet, and this is where it's gonna get a little different. So we're going to push our yarn, I mean push our hook behind the treble crochet that we just made, and we're gonna put it in the middle stitch here. So we skipped one, two, three. So we're gonna put our hook in this middle stitch. So you're going to pull your hook behind and then insert it from the front. And you're gonna create a treble crochet as normal. And then when you're done, you have your X. So I'm gonna show you that a few more times because I know that it's tricky. After you complete your second treble crochet, you want to make sure to chain one. And we're going to yarn over two times. And then again, we're going to skip three stitches. So one, two, three. And then we're going to insert into that next one into the fourth stitch over. You're going to create a treble crochet as normal. chain one, yarn over two times, and then we're going to take our hook and put it behind the treble crochet that we just made, and we're going to put it right here in this middle. So you should always have a skipped stitch in between each treble crochet. So again, we're going to loop the hook behind it, insert it into the front of the stitch, 
like you normally would and create your next treble crochet. And then don't forget to chain one after each treble. And we're gonna move on. I'm gonna show you to you one last time. Gonna yarn over twice. Skip the next three. One, two, three. Insert into the fourth. Make a treble crochet. Chain one. Yarn over twice. Take your hook behind the treble crochet that you just made. Insert into the middle of the, of the three that you skipped and create a treble. And chain one. So that's how you create the X. And we're gonna go ahead and keep going along with that same pattern there. So we did our chain one, yarn over twice and skip your three. And we'll keep doing that until we get to the end and I'll do an end of the row check-in. End of row six, you're gonna have two stitches left. You're going to chain one and you're gonna treble crochet in the very last, which is the chain three from the last row. So again, chain at the very top chain here, that's where you're gonna insert your hook and place a treble crochet to end row six. So these are the repeats that we have throughout the cardigan. So we have our three rows of double crochet. We have one row of treble crochet, skip, treble crochet, skip. And then we have our X's row. We're gonna keep repeating these same rows until we reach the length. So for our next three rows, they're gonna be our double crochet rows. And again, the first double crochet row is going to be a little different because we have to work it with this row. So let's go ahead and do that together for row seven. You're gonna chain three and turn your work. And again, our chain counts as our first stitch. So this, so this opening is for our first stitch. So we're going to yarn over. So our second double crochet is going to be placed in our first chain one space. So that's right here. You're just gonna go in this open space and create your double crochet. And then you're gonna place your next double crochet in this stitch. And then the chain one space. And next up will be this stitch and then the chain one space. So you can see the pattern here. You're going to put a double crochet and an actual stitch and then the chain one space, a stitch, chain one space. You're going to follow that all the way until the end. And as always, I will meet you at the end. End of row seven check for you guys. Going to place a double crochet here and don't forget this there is a chain one space technically right here so you want to make sure that you place a double crochet in that chain one space and then a double crochet count four one two three four and that's where you're going to place your last double crochet all right and rows eight and nine are going to be all double crochet rows so you're going to chain three turn your work and place a double crochet in each stitch. And you're gonna do this for eight and nine. So I will see you for row 10. All right guys, you did it. You did all the repeats for the cardigan. How are you guys feeling? Are you feeling comfortable with it? You getting in your groove? All right, so now we did all of the special stitches and you know the pattern and how it's gonna go. So now I'm gonna tell you how to keep continuing. We're gonna keep going until row 30, but we're gonna be repeating the same type of rows that we've been doing. So you're gonna repeat rows two through nine. So what we just did. So row two is this row. That's our treble crochet row, where we treble crochet, chain one, skip one, 
treble crochet, chain one, skip one. So you're gonna repeat row two. And then these three rows, your double crochet rows, then you're gonna go on to your X treble crochet row and then three more double crochet rows. So for row 10, is gonna be a repeat of row two. So I'm gonna put that graphic up here for you guys to look at in the repeats. And the time slots when we do each row are gonna be down below in the description. So if you want, just need a refresher on that specific row, you can click the little time frame of each row down below. But I'm gonna leave you here with this graphic to tell you what repeats your next 20 rows will be. You can go ahead and pause it, screenshot it, or if you want to, again, follow along with a free pattern, you can do that as well. But I'm going to leave you guys be for the next 20 rows so you can do these repeats, and I will meet you back so that we can do the front panel. All right, friends, as you saw in the graphic, you should go up to row 30 for the body portion of the cardigan, and that your 30th row should be a repeat of row six, so your X's. And we're gonna go ahead and get started on one of your front panels. So you're gonna have a front panel here, the back portion here, and then your other front panel over here. So you'll have two front panels and one back panel in the middle. So to start the first row, of your front panel you're going to need your one stitch marker each size you're going to place your stitch marker in a different place and this is going to be the width of your front one of your front panels so for the extra small small size you're going to do place your stitch marker in the 38th stitch for the medium large size you're going to place it in the 50th stitch for the extra large 2X size, you're gonna place it in the 62nd stitch. And for the 3X, 4X size, you're gonna place it in the 68th stitch. So how to count, because it's gonna be your X row. This is your first stitch, so you're gonna count that as one. Your chain one space, two. This stitch, three. Chain one, four this stitch five, chain one six, and you're gonna keep going until you get to the number you need to be. And you're gonna place it, whether that be in a chain one space or a stitch, you wanna be sure to place your stitch marker there. If it's in a chain one space, we'll just have to keep that in mind when we get here that our last stitch needs to actually go in this chain one space. So you're going to place your stitch marker in the correct stitch and that's just gonna stay there, that way you know when to end your row. So go ahead and place that where it needs to go, and we will get started on the first row of our front panel. And again, guys, I'm just creating a sample size, so this isn't gonna be the full card again, but I am showing you each step that you need to take to make a full card again. But I just wanna point that out because I know you're like, wait a minute, that isn't 30 rows. So this is just my, my sample here, just to teach you guys how to create it. So I placed my stitch marker for where it, it would go for my front panel, and we're gonna go ahead and get started on row one. And in these rows, we are going to be decreasing. So when we did double crochet rows previously, we would chain three, and that would count as our first stitch. But because we're decreasing, we're going to chain two. And then we're going to yarn over and double crochet in the very first opening, which will be our chain one space. And this is going to count as our first double crochet decrease. So our chaining two and creating that first double crochet creates one stitch. So that's our first decrease. And then we're going to create a second decrease over the next two stitches. So we're gonna yarn over to do a double crochet, but it's gonna be a little different. We're going to yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, two, 
And then we're gonna keep these two loops on our hook here and then we're gonna yarn over and insert into our chain one space. Yarn over, pull through two. And then we're gonna yarn over and pull through all three of these loops. And that is going to put these two stitches together. So for the next round, there's only one opening for those two stitches. So that's how we're gonna do a decrease. So we just created two decreases. And then we're gonna place a double crochet in the rest of the stitches until we get to four stitches before our stitch markers. So that in, well, four spaces. So I have my stitch marker here, so that counts as one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna stop right here four, four stitches before you get to your stitch marker. So you're gonna place a double crochet in each stitch and chain one space until we get four spaces away from our stitch marker. All right, here we are. We are four spaces away. So we have one, two, three, and then four is right where our stitch marker is. And we're going to create two decreases at the end here. So again, you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through the first two. And then you're gonna keep these two loops on your hook you're gonna yarn over, insert into your next space, yarn over, pull through two, and then you're gonna yarn over and pull through all three. And that's your first decrease. And we're gonna create another one. So we're gonna insert into our stitch, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert to the next space, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through all three. And that's your second decrease. And the decreases are there to create that shape so that we have our front panel shaping up nicely to come to a smaller point here for our shoulder seam. So it is gonna go like this. That is why we're creating these decreases. So to count your stitches, you're gonna count your decreases as one. So these, this cluster here is gonna be counted as one because it's a decrease. The next cluster is gonna be counted as our second stitch because it was a decrease and then as normal, three, four, five. And again, at the end, your two decrease clusters are gonna be counted as one. So you're gonna count and your stitch count should be as follows. For extra small, small sizes, you should have, you should have a total of 34 double crochets. For the medium large size, you should have 46. For the extra large 2X, you should have 58. And for the 3X, 4X, you should have 64. And that's for your first row. For the second row, we're going to chain two and turn. And again, that stitch marker was to indicate the end of our row. So your rows are gonna be a lot shorter this time around. You're gonna chain two and turn. And again, that chain two is counting as your partial first double crochet. And we're gonna decrease two times again, just like we did last row. So you're gonna yarn over, insert into the next stitch there, yarn over, pull through, and you're gonna create a regular double crochet there. But that chain two makes this a decrease. So that's our first decrease, and we're gonna create a second. So we're gonna yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and again, keep those two on your hook. We're gonna yarn over and insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through all three. And that creates our second decrease. And then again, we're just going to double crochet in each stitch until we get four stitches from the end of our row. All right, and just keep in mind again, these clusters here are your decrease from your previous row. So there's technically four pieces here, right? But they only come to one opening at the top for the next row. So your last four are gonna be two regular double crochets and then your last two stitches will be your two clusters. So we're going to decrease over these last four stitches. So yarn over, 
insert your hook, yarn over, pull through two, keep those two on, yarn over, insert into the next, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last three. And you're gonna repeat that on the last two stitches. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through two, keep these two on, yarn over, insert into this last stitch, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three. And those are your two decreases for that row. So you're gonna have two decreases at the beginning and end of your rows when you do your double crochet rows. So for row three, we're going to chain two, turn our work, and again, two decreases to start. So we did our chain two that starts our first decrease and we're gonna create a double crochet in the next stitch and that's our first decrease and we're gonna work on our second. And then again, a double crochet in each stitch until you get to the last four stitches and then you're gonna create two double crochet decreases in the last four stitches. All right, and those are your decrease rows. So you're only gonna be decreasing when you're doing your double crochet rows. Now we're gonna go to row four, which is going to be our treble crochet row. So we're going to chain five, one, two, three, four, five. This is just gonna be like row two down here. There's not gonna be any decreasing, so it's gonna be exactly the same. Our chain five is gonna count as our treble crochet and chain one, so we're gonna yarn over twice, skip one, insert into the next, and do a treble crochet. Then we're gonna chain one, yarn over twice, skip one, insert into the next. And you're gonna do that until the end of your row. Right, and once you're done with that, we're gonna go back to our decrease rows. So rows five, six, and seven are gonna be double crochet rows and you're gonna do two, two decreases at the beginning and two decreases at the end. So you're gonna start by chaining two, turning your work, and then you're gonna go into your chain one space for your first double crochet. And you created your first decrease. And then you're gonna go into your treble cr crochet space Yarn over, pull through the first two, keep these two on your hook, yarn over, go in the chain one space. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three, and that's your second. And then you're gonna do as normal, you're gonna double crochet in the chain one spaces and the stitches. And then and when you get to your last four, you're gonna do two decreases over the last four. And you're gonna repeat that for six and seven, and then I will meet you back here for row eight. All right, once you're done with your three decreasing double crochet rows, we're going to move on to row eight, which is our X's row. And again, for these, for the treble crochet rows and the X's row, you're not gonna do any decreasing. So it's gonna be worked as normal. So you're gonna chain your five, turn your work, and you're gonna work your X's row as normal. So you're going to yarn over twice, skip four, one, two, three, four. I mean, <clears throat> skip three, one, two, three, work in the fourth, and you're gonna create your X's as normal. So you're gonna chain one, yarn over twice, work behind, go in the middle skipped stitch, and create your treble crochet, and chain one, and keep going all the way until the end of your row. So you're going to chain two and turn. And you're gonna place a double crochet in that chain one space for your first decrease. Double crochet decrease over the next two. So keep these two on your hook and do a second decrease and then double crochet in each space until your last four, and then create two decreases over the last four stitches. And you're gonna continue the repeats. I 
and I'm gonna put the picture for the repeats up here and the stopping points for each size. So be sure to follow those depending on what size you're doing. And once you finish your front panel and you came to your last row, we're going to go ahead and tie off. So you're going to take your scissors and cut off, leaving a little bit of a long tail enough for you to sew in your shoulder seam. So you're gonna cut it, you're gonna take it and flip it through like this, like you're chaining one, and you're gonna pull it all the way through and tighten it, and you're gonna tie off for your front panel, and then we're going to move on to the back panel. So you're gonna take your stitch marker that you used to mark off your front panel. We're gonna take that off. We have our front panel over here, and we're gonna create our back panel. I'm gonna spread it apart a little bit, just so you can see where you started. So I started in this chain one space. To start your back panel, you're gonna count two spaces or a stitch in a space to where you're going to attach your yarn. So my last, my first stitch for my front panel was in this chain one space. So this stitch and then this chain one space are going to be skipped. So I'm gonna attach my yarn on this stitch. So I'm gonna place my hook in there to remember that's where I'm starting. I'm going to grab my yarn again. You're going to make a slip knot like we did at the very beginning of this project. You're going to place it onto your hook. And you're going to pull it through that stitch or that chain one space where you're starting. Then you're going to chain three. One, two, three three and we're going to create a double crochet row in the back panel we will not be doing any decreasing so it's going to be just like the body just in a, a shorter space so we will not be doing any decreasing now that we have attached our yarn we're going to take our stitch marker and we're going to count the stitches in space chain one spaces until you get to the right stitch count across. If you're doing the extra small, small, you should count four, 42 spaces across. The medium large, 52 spaces. Extra large, 2X, 62 spaces. 3X, 4X, 72 spaces. So you're gonna count for whatever size you're doing. So we attached our yarn where it needs to go. We're gonna count our chain one space as one, this is two, next chain one is three, stitch is four, chain one is five. So count that way your, your stitches and your chain one spaces. Count them until you get to the, the right number for your size and that's where you're going to place your stitch marker. So if you're, say you're doing the extra small small, you counted 42 spaces and you're gonna place your stitch marker. Again, if it's in a chain one space, we always just want to take note that that's in a chain one space and not in an actual stitch. So you know where to place your last double crochet. So we chain three, we placed our stitch marker so we know when the row ends and you're going to place a double crochet in each chain one space and stitch until you get to your stitch marker. So go ahead and place a double crochet in each space and stitch. All right, we came to the end and my stitch marker was in a chain one space. So I need to make sure to place my last stitch there. And that's the end of my row for my body, for my back panel. So as you can see, we have just a little bit of space in between your front panel and where your back panel starts, just a little bit of space. Um, and this is gonna create your armhole. To show you what a finished one looks like, so we have our front panel here, our back panel here, and once we sew, this is as much as you gotta sew, guys. Just this little bit, and we'll get to that later in the video, but this little opening is gonna create the space for your armhole, and it is a very large opening because you want that boho 
look to it. Um, so it will have a little bit of droop and it'll go down a little farther than your armpit. And um, that's why we separate them just a little bit to give a nice good opening for your arm. Now back to the back panel. Again, since there's no decreasing, this is gonna be worked just like the body of your cardigan. So I'm just gonna go ahead and post the repeats since you guys know what you're doing by now. I'm just gonna post the repeats that you need to do for this portion and I will meet you back here for our next front panel. And once you reach your rows for your back panel, um, no matter what size you're doing, you're always gonna end in a double crochet row. Again, we're gonna tie off. You don't need to leave as long of a tail for this one, but just a little bit so you can sew it in later. Just like you're going to chain one and pull through, and that's how you tie it off. And now we are going to start our last portion of this, which will be our other front panel. So as I'm sure you've guessed, it's gonna be the same repeats um, as the first front panel that we did, I'm just gonna show you how and where to attach your yarn, and then you can go back and rewatch the portions for the front panel. And just like we did for the back panel, um, we're going to find where we left off here, or so that was in a chain one space, so I'm gonna count this stitch and the chain one space as my two stitches that I'm skipping. And then I'm going to insert my hook into the next one right here. And I'm going to grab my yarn, again, creating a slip knot. Putting that on our hook and pulling it through and chaining three. One, two, three. And since this is the last portion, you're going to go all the way to the edge here. So you don't even really need a stitch marker. You're going to go all the way till the end and you're going to create your double crochet row. And again, this is going to be the same exact repeat, same exact thing as the other front panel. I just wanted to show you where to attach your yarn. So you can go ahead and again, I will have it down in the description, um, the exact minute and seconds where I did the front panel and then we will go ahead and get into assembly. All right, and I went in to grab the finished Aria Cardi that I wear myself. I made the extra large 2X size for myself and I just wanted to show you the narrowing of the front panel just so you can get a good feel for it because it becomes very narrow at the top. I have, this is my seam right here. So it's just a few stitches across. So I just, I did just want to show you the shaping of it a little bit. Um, but that, this is my finished Cardi that I wear absolutely all the time. I adore it. And this is my back panel. Oh, I can't get it all in frame. I made such a large size. That's why I was using just a sample size. It's easier to get it all on camera. But as you can see, we have our X's row and then our treble crochet row. And it just really, it's super airy and it's such a great cardigan to have for summer. But I will go ahead and show you how we're going to assemble the shoulder seams. Pulling out my little baby sample size now. So you're going to get your yarn needle and you're gonna take that long tail that you left on your front panel and you're gonna thread it through. All right, and you're gonna take your front panel and you're gonna lay it over top, like so, of your back panel so that your two edges are lined up. And you're gonna take your needle and just go through both sides. And then in the next stitch, go through both. 
this is just a real quick whip stitch and you're going to keep going that across the few stitches that you have And this is the last portion. So it's just a little bit of sewing. And as you can see, we just created our shoulder seam. And for my sample size, this is the armhole. And that's all the sewing that you guys have to do. Isn't that amazing? So you're gonna take this, you can create a knot, however you like to tie off your, your projects. I like to take this and thread back through. So I hide my tail. And then I cut my yarn so that that's already done and taken care of. And I have my seam and you're going to do that for the other side and you will be all finished with your Aria Cardi. All right, friends, congratulations on finishing your Aria Cardi. I know some of you saw the pictures of the Cardi and you might have noticed there was some fringe at the bottom of mine. I have a whole video on how to create fringe and how to attach it to your pieces. I will link that video down below if you want to add some fun fringe to the bottom of your Aria Cardi. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I would love to see all of your Aria Cardis if you make them. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Sierra's Crafty Creations. Um, you can DM me, tag me in your pictures. I would absolutely love to see them. And be sure that you hit that subscribe button down below, guys, so you can see more of my crochet, knit, and crafty tutorials. See you next time. Bye!